All right. Just as mentioned, this is Nicholas Acosta, downtown expert, Realty School of Real Estate. Um, that this recording or this training is being recorded for quality purposes. Or do you guys have, uh, are you guys aware and give me permission to record this video? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started on math review tonight. And that's going to start with, um, <clears throat> let's see here. We, we're going to first, I'm just going to go over, like I was saying, Amanda, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, Everybody, I'm going to go ahead and just go over these math questions on the breakdown. I already put the how to calculate them or how to do the math in here. Um, and then we're going to jump in to start the first, like the first section of the one of 50 on most like most likely to be on this exam for the state of Florida. All right. And okay. if you guys have any questions, chime in to say, Nick, stop. Hold on. Let's let's go over this. I'm going to go through this as thoroughly and as slowly as possible. Uh, you know, not slowly, but thoroughly is what I mean. To make sure we under, you guys understand it and then you guys can go over this this is one of the two packets that i sent you guys in pdf format and uh that way you guys have you have these with the answer key as well all right so let's go ahead and get started and let me just check on the the zoom here one more time i'm gonna <clears throat> what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna scroll to the left so that everybody can see i wanted to zoom in and make sure everybody can see the screen all right number the first one i want to review and i picked uh, a, a couple of them that I know more than likely will be on the state exam and definitely on my course exam. So let's, I'm going to start with number 12. What was the sales price of a new home if the documentary stamps on the deed were $4,515? So we're going to go over, I'm going to show you guys, that's why I put it on the screen, how to do this. And this is because I want to make sure you understand the formula. So when you see this and you practice on your own, you guys will know how to solve the problem, all right? So we are gonna use, for number 12, it's called the substitution method. And then we're gonna do the doc stamp on the deed formula. All right, so the doc stamp cost is 70 cents. That's why you see that 70 cents right there. So you take $645,000, this is the substitution method. Basically what we're doing is we're taking the question and we're doing the math backwards to get the answer got you got it guys right ladies yeah. and, and all right so we're doing the substituting method where we go this is the easiest way to solve this problem when you're taking the exam so using the substitution method so we're taking we start with a so you go down the line until you get the answer that matches right that goes so six hundred forty five thousand dollars is the first choice you divide that by a hundred you get so in this problem, you're going to divide and multiply, divide and multiply. 645,000 divided by 100 equals 6,450. And like I said, the doc stamp costs 70 cents, all right? This is $6,450 times 70 cents, which equals $4,515. And like it says, to keep it simple and not to overthink it, once you have a match, that is the answer. As simple as that. Does everyone understand that so far? Or yeah. Okay. So I'm basically what I'm trying to do tonight is break it down for you guys to make this not as difficult as you may feel intimidated by it. And the only reason I said it is because when I started this, when I did the seven-day course, trust me, on day one when I opened the book, I was intimidated as hell. But you're gonna be fine when you take the exam, and it'll be under easy to understand for this test. So didn't yeah. you say I'm sorry, but didn't you say first you subtract something, or am I crazy? No, no, no. I might not have been no, here. No, 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 right. no, you're right. I said substitution method. Not okay. Subtract. Yeah. So you divide and you multiply in this problem only, in this one. Oh. I said, okay. I said substitution method is what I said. We're doing the math backwards is what I mean by substitution. Oh. You get the answer. I don't understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Don't don't apologize. It's all right. Trust me. It took me a long time. It's to the get first that. time I've ever heard of any of this because I haven't really been. Well, you I'm just doing the math part. You have, yeah, you haven't got this far into the book yet, but it's all right. Yeah. It's all good. So when you get to that part, though, this will start will register when you go to start studying that section on documentary stamp taxes. Um, okay. So that we're using with the substitution method is what we're doing is we're using the answers they give you on the multiple choice. Mm -hmm. 
and doing the math backwards to get the answer. And once you have the correct answer, then you can stop. And then oh, okay. So okay. if there's like four choices, you just do it right. backwards and then figure out which one's right. right. So exactly. if you have a, so on the actual state exam, this is this exam. It only comes to two answers. But when you get the state exam, when you go sit for, or the course exam as a state, it'll have four choices. You mm -hmm. just go from A, B, C, and D until it matches the answer and to get the answer is basically what you do on this question. Okay. So that's why I, when I took the state exam, that's what I did. I went through, when I was doing the math, I went through each answer until it, it equaled what it said in the question. Cause we're looking for that 45, 15 is the answer. Right? Or like, so that's taking 45, 50, like, so, so I'll go over 4,515 is what the, the documentary stamp taxes are on the D. Right. So right. using the substitution method, we're doing the doc stamp on the deed formula, which is we're going down the line, A, B, C, or D. We're starting with A until we get the right answer. 645,000. You always will divide that by 100. Get you 6,450. 6,450 times 70 cents, which is the doc stamp tax on the deed. It's like a stamp that you put on your, you know, like postage on the mail. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by stamp. And 4,515, and that matches the, the number in the question. And that's why it says, once you have a match, that is the answer. And then you can stop. You can circle or select A on the course or state exam when you have the answer that matches what's in there. We're do, basically, we're doing that backwards. We're taking the 645,000, which is the sale price of the home, dividing by 100, 6450. And then you always then you will always multiply by the stamp amount, and that equals forty five fifteen. And there we can stop. We don't have to go down to B or C or D now. We can just select this answer because that you're doing the um what they call the substitution method. Okay, thank you. That that helps. Well, you're, you're welcome. No, you're you're gonna get, when you get to this section in the book, it's gonna now that we're going over this right now tonight. When you get to that section in the book, it's gonna click. Yeah, I don't make more crap. Sense. I know this. This was gonna happen because that's what they did with me. And we were talking about this stuff in my class before we got to this section when I was in the seven day course. And when I got to this point, I'm like, oh, that's easy. So you know, reversing it. Did you have a question, Lee? Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Amanda, how are you? Are you good on it? I'm good, but I'm just curious. So that's 70 cents right there. Does right. is that a big like, will that vary based off of what, I mean, because you refer to like an actual stamp. Is it oh, like yeah. So in your doc stamp on the deed section in your course, let me go into my, oh, sorry. Let me find where it is. What did I do with it? Oh, let me minimize this. Um, You guys can't see this right now, but I'm, I'm going to go to where it is. Hold on. Uh, this is under... Um, Taxes affecting real estate, I believe. Hold on. Chapter. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to go in. I'm, I'm going to share the screen here with you guys. Can't probably see the screen yet. Oh, Ali got kicked out. Ali, are you there? All right. Let me go and. Oh, not. How the hell does it take me? Sorry. It took me out of that section. Ali, did you get back in? Yeah. Yeah. I don't All know right. what happened there. It's all good. It probably just lost the connection. Zoom is sometimes it can be unstable, especially if a lot of people are using it out there in the world. It can yeah. go become unstable. Um, let me go. I'm trying to find you guys. Not the taxes, not assessments. I'm just trying to remember where I've got it right here. I'm going to show you guys where that. that so that's a set number to answer your question. But I'm going to go to the section in the book where it shows it. And uh, that way you can see when you guys are in the real, they want you to know how to do this because you always want to double check your buyer or seller's final paperwork uh, settlement statement to make sure that title title has so many things that they do go through or files they go through that they make mistakes because they're also human. So this is why this is important to know this in general, but in real world, you won't really have you won't have to calculate it, but it's good to know how to calculate this. 
because it helps you make sure that they didn't make title companies didn't make a mistake. Um, yeah, it could happen. Oh no, it happens all the time because they do so many files at one time and closing at once. Um, doc stamps. Okay, I am going to show you guys an example in the book that I have online, and I'm going to hit resume share. Wait, stop this share. Oh wait, new share. Hold on. Where is my book? Here's my book. Can you guys see my book? I'm gonna, I'm going to zoom in on the book. Just give me guys. Yep. I can see it. How about that for you, Allison? Can you see that better? Um, I can make it bigger on my end, yeah. Or I can go to, I've got the computer open, so. Right. Where are you? Actually, I, I got it a little bit bigger than, I think I, this is, this is a large. Miami is 60. Yep. Okay. But they're not going to ask you that on the test. Right, no. They're not so don't worry about that on the test. Right. The test, for test purposes, is going to be 70 cents. It's always going to be 70. So these are the strength, yeah, state transfer taxes so these numbers here in this chart this you need to know for the test okay all right and then you also need to know for the real world but definitely for the test both tests mine as well as the state so type of tax we're talking about doc stamps on the dean this is the best way for me to describe it here for you guys let me highlight it is this somewhere in this course as well yep unit 14 unit 14 okay. unit 14 under Real estate related computations and closing of transactions is the section. What unit are you on now, Allie? Well, I was looking at the working with numbers. I was doing that one. So it's somewhere in the one I'm in. Okay. Unit 14. You just started this one, right? Or probably? Yeah. Okay. No worries. Once you guys commit this to memory and know how to use the, the formulas, it's you just got this is a memorization part. No doc stamps in the deed is 70 cents per 100. The 70 cents per 100, that's why we divided by 100. That's the where we per 100 means divide by 100. So doc stamps on the deed is 70 cents per 100. Don't pay attention to the Miami part because they're not going to ask you that on the on the test. That only okay. applies to Miami Dade County, but they're, they're not going to ask you that. Preliminary. Okay. Um, charge on the purchase price because you, there's different things that these taxes. The doc stamps on the note or intangible tax has a different item that it's that it taxes. So charge on the purchase price. So we said in that problem we were working on, the purchase price was six hundred forty-five thousand, right? Divided by one hundred gets you six thousand four fifty times 0. 0.70 Got you what was it forty-one forty-five or something like that? Uh, forty-one oh, forty-five something like that. Yeah, something like that. All right. So this 14.2, this section right here, this little chart, when you're in your online course, guys, this, I guess it won't let me highlight it. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, but. Anyways, oh, no, it's letting me do it right now. So 14.2 is the figure number. You know what I'm going to do? I yeah, will. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I'll find it in here eventually. I'll screenshot it and um, send it to you guys later in a text message, all right? Yeah. I'm gonna it doesn't, does write it to primary or preliminary right. steps to closing. I think it might be before that. Probably, yeah. Or they probably already talked about it in an earlier unit. They probably in, like hinted at it or gave you a, a preview of what was coming up next in the book. So okay. this is something that you guys could like Amanda, Lee, and Allison, if you want to, and Nicole and Tina. I know you guys are not with us tonight, but you're listening to the recording. This is something to print out and attach it to, I don't know, a mirror in your bathroom that you see every day or a computer screen if you're at work and you have the computer at the bottom of your monitor. This is something you just have to remember. That's all there is to it. Okay. It seems overwhelming and intimidating, but it's not as bad as it seems because you're going to go sit down for my course exam. You can sit for the state exam and you're going to get it right because you're going to like, oh, Nick said to put this on the wall or on a mirror in my house, or on the refrigerator. If you still have a refrigerator, you can put magnets on. I know our fridge, we can't do that but because of the type of fridge or the type of material it is, but this is something to put somewhere where you see it every day until you take the test, all right? So, doc stamps on the note, because we're going to probably have a question on that, but if not, it's in your practice questions. It's 35 cents per 100. This goes charged to a promissory note 
new and assumed mortgage loans. They're going to ask questions like that on the test. Intangible tax, 0 0.002 is the rate. This is charged on the mortgage loan. Only applies to new financing. So that's, but that's just something that you guys are going to, you know, study. Okay. So we'll go back to the, to the test. I'm going to screenshot it while you have it on there. Oh yeah, yeah. there you go. Now I can look at it because <laughs> I can't find yeah. it in the. I would print right it. Now. I would print it out if you can, or if you just want to keep it on your computer or your your phone, that's fine too. As an image, a picture. Yeah, I might be able to print it out. <clears throat> I'll try. Print it out, and then I would just attach it to where somewhere you look at every single day until you take the test. Yeah, yeah babe, I already screenshot it. I'll send it to you. I'm gonna send it to the group text to, after we're done tonight as well for everybody. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's good to have this. These are like, this is like anytime in the book that you're studying and you see a section like this here, that is mm -hmm. something you need to know for the test, everybody. All right. If it's in that little box, right, it's important. Yeah. They have a lot of those little places like that in there. All right. So that's cool. That, so that's pretty much it. That's, how you they're just teaching we're, we're teaching you a way to make it simple to not overthink it when you're taking your you know you're taking your state exam yeah so let me go to resume share oh wait let me see here we're still hold on one second it's still recording and let me just go to a new share and bring you guys back to my other page all right cool all right so we're going to talk about all right we're going to, before I show that up, okay, so we're going to talk about a property is rectangular. We're going to look about how many acres it contains. You guys know about acres, right? 43,560, right. Is it, is it, all right. So we're going to talk about this. So a, rec, a property is rectangular and measures 500 feet by 620 lineal feet. How many acres does it contain? So I'll show you guys the breakdown of how to do the math here. So 500, you're gonna, when it says 500 by 620, that always means multiply. You know, like when you're trying to find out the square feet of a room, you multiply, right? To get the square right. foot. So we're going to take 500 times 620, which equals $310,000, which you would do on your calculator when you're taking the state or course exam. And you're gonna divide the 310,000 because there's, Remember the 43,560, which will give you 7.11 acres. That's all you, that you, this is memorization as well. You need to remember this number right here. 43,560 is what will be divided by whatever the total lineal feet is to get your acres, which would be answer B right here on the test. Lee, do you have any questions on this? So can you explain from what you remember Forty-three five thousand five sixty. What does that mean? What What does that mean? How do you define that? What Isn't is that? that how many square more? feet in an acre? Yep, correct. How many square feet in an acre? Forty-three thousand five sixty. So you always use that number, right? Yep, always use that number. It's a constant number. In order to figure out how many acres is in lineal feet. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Yep. <laughs> okay. Forty-three five sixty. That's another number you want to put on your on a piece of paper in an important place that you look at every day too just like the stamp the, the doc stamp formulas mm -hmm. or the rates those are constant number or constant you know that that's what you have to memorize for the test they're going to give you the other numbers but you have to memorize how much the stamp cost or that kind of stuff yeah on the test so when it you said when it says like 500 by 620 that by means divide no no multiply, multiply. Multiply. multiply okay multiply. that's what i thought so yep. it's it's actually feet times I, I don't know so it's multiply just so i get that yeah. right no no you got it yeah multiply when it says by that means 500 by 620 you would multiply all right amanda lee everybody else good gonna move on or yeah. all right no worries i just want to make sure i don't like zoom past stuff um okay all right, number 10. And like I said, I picked questions that I remember, God, a long time ago, over four years ago now that we're on the test. I don't remember how I remember that. It's crazy. But number 10, what is the total amount 
of the state documentary stamp taxes on the note. Remember, when you read these questions, these math problems, slow down. You have three hours to take the test, both course exam and state exam. Read it carefully, okay? That's just how people can get them wrong. If you don't read it right, you can make mistakes and the answer will come out wrong and you won't have the right answer selected. So I'm just telling you from experience, slow down and read the math questions or the math problems. The word, they give you what they're looking for, but just be careful of how you how you read it to make sure you don't miss something. So I'm going to read I this think part. They give you a whole bunch of words to confuse you too a little bit. Oh, well, they can. Yeah, they can. Um, but you also... And if they give you a bunch of words, they may be only looking for one thing, right? And that's it. Yeah, they, yeah. So that's why you always have to slow down and read it carefully because you got to figure out, make sure you know exactly what they're asking for you to do because they're going to fill, like you said, Allison, they're going to put tons of words sometimes there to kind of like trip you up in the problem to make sure you're yeah. paying attention to the test. Are you going through this? No, so, they're going through the math one right now. You have it. I told you that in the beginning. I gave it to you. It's right there on the on the table. Babe. What is the total amount of the yeah. state doc stamp taxes on the note and intangible tax on the mortgage if a property sold for one eighty with a seventy? I have no idea how to even figure that out. All right. Well, no worries. <laughs> That's where we're gonna go. And look, it says the first thing it says. This one is tricky because you have to figure out the loan amount before you can compute the doc stamp on the note and intangibles. You can use the loan to value formula. All right. So we're looking, remember we talked about this in the other times, loan to value ratio. Like if you have to yeah. have a certain amount of equity in the house yes, and the property. Mm -hmm. So this come loan to value, loan to value ratio is telling us we're figuring out, but this one we're figuring out. Yeah. Loan to value. This is equity. So let's start with this $180,000. Um, Purchase price. We we bought it for one hundred eighty thousand. You're going to times right. it by 0. 0.75 because the seventy mortgage is seventy five percent. Okay, so like that means that the buyer put twenty five percent down payment on the property on the purchase when it says seventy five percent mortgage, twenty five percent down in cash, and they're financing the seventy five percent of the loan. The loan is seventy five percent okay. finance. So okay, you get one hundred thirty five thousand. We bought it for one hundred eighty. 180,000 and the loan to value is 135,000, right? That's what we, we owe on the house for what we paid for it, all right? Here we go, the loan is for 135,000. Now we do the doc stamps on the note and intangibles add them together. So this is a, a word problem, math word problem that we do in steps. So do it in the order that the question asks and do follow the, the, the process in order for you to get the answer correctly. So I'm gonna show you. We're gonna take 135,000, right? So doc stamps, remember we divide by 100, you get 1,350. And the doc stamps on the note is 35 cents, right? So that equals the 472.50. So let me go back and let me share this screen or wait, maybe I can resume share. Oh no, it's not gonna let me do that. Hold on. Let me go back guys, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you can see the screen, right? So this is just from, like I said, print this out, put it in an important place that you see every day, multiple times a day. Doc stamps on the note will always be 35 cents per 100. 35 cents meaning divided by 100. So you take, um, let me go back to the other screen, hold on. I'm just trying to get used to switching screens back and forth. On this pro on program, so we're taking one hundred thirty-five thousand. We divide it by one hundred because you divide by per one hundred, right? So mm -hmm. thirteen fifty is per one hundred of one hundred thirty-five thousand. That's what that means. Times thirty-five cents, four hundred seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. One hundred thirty-five thousand. You have to add that intangibles. That's the point zero zero two, right? Correct. Yep. So then you get four seventy-two fifty plus two seventy, which is the so. The doc stamp on the note is here. This is the doc stamp on the note. I may just write that so you guys can see visually. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not going to answer it. Doc stamp on the note. Yeah, sorry. And this is the uh, intangible tax. 
I'm just trying to do for visualization purpose of teaching for you guys. So we're at seven hundred forty-two dollars and fifty cents. All right. So your yeah. answer is A, right here. They want to know the total amount of the document state documentary taxes on the note and intangible tax on the mortgage. That's all that they're asking for. So that's how yeah. you get your answer from seven forty-two fifty. It's one of those where they put a lot more words in there to kind of confuse you on this on this question is what they did that's what i thought too yeah you explained it well so yeah thank you oh thank you for thank you for letting me know that i appreciate the feedback because i want to make sure it's, i'm not just sounding like whatever i appreciate that ladies and then allison thank you very much for that that makes you feel good so i promise so just remember because that section that thing i showed you guys 14.2 state transfer taxes when i was in the course for seven days for that entire seven days I had took a copy of that, put it on my wall, and I saw it every single day until I took the state exam or in the course exam as well. So that's all you guys have to do. Put that somewhere where you see it all the time. You know, wherever you put maybe your motivational quote or whatever you have, like, you know, on your mirror or whatever, on a bulletin board in your house or work is what I would do. Um, all right, this one. What is the gross rent multiplier of a property that sold for six hundred thousand and rents for sixty thousand annually? So we're just going to go over the the equation here. All right, a gross rent multiplier formula is the sales price divided by the monthly rent. This problem gives us annual rent. We must first divide the sixty thousand by twelve, which is twelve months in a year, to get the monthly rent. That gives us $5,000 a month. Then you use the formula 600,000 divided by 5,000. Oh, shoot. Where did it go? Sorry. Will equal 120. And your answer would be 120. So what you're going to do is when they give you, sometimes they may give you the monthly rent. That means you wouldn't have to divide by 12. But if you get the annual rent, then you would divide by 12. And then you would take the 600,000 divided by the 5,000 to get 120 as the gross rent multiplier of the property. Can you show that little thing one more time? Okay. Oh, this right here? You got it. Yeah, the annual yeah. rent divide the by 12 to get the monthly rent. And then- Let me screenshot that for you guys as well. And I'll put that in a text tonight with the other ones. <clears throat> so once you get the monthly rent, then you divide, you divide it by the sales price, the purchase price. And then divide that by purchase price. Now let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, thank you for showing me that again. I think I got it now. Amanda, how are you? All right? Yeah, so you can take these formulas and put any number in there. Right, it's just about, okay. mostly this is, the math is memorizing the formulas the yeah. dot stamps on the Ds, the intangible tax, and plugging in the numbers they give you. They're always going to give you the numbers to plug in. And then you just plug those numbers into the formula to get the answer, if that makes sense. Perfect. Yep. That's all it is. They're not trying to, what do you, it's more of a memorization of, form, of formulas and the stamps and the intangible taxes is what it is on this uh, test. All right. So, Number three here, another example for the math. A buyer has applied for a loan. The purchase price of the property is 650,000. If the borrow, borrower has 250,000 for a down payment, what would the loan to value ratio be? Using substitution again to get the answer. So I'm gonna go through the question or the answer or the formulas. Loan to value is loan amount divided by the value. In this problem, the value is 650,000. The loan is what you are borrowing or the person is borrowing. If they have 250,000, then they only need to borrow 400,000 because you're gonna take that 650, subtract what the down payment in cash is. That's how we got the 400,000. Then you take 400,000, it's gonna be the smaller number over the larger number. We'll give you the percentage of 61.5. So loan to value, you take what, um, I'm sorry, what you need to borrow 
over the value of the purchase amount. That's what gives you the, the percentage, the 61.5 right here. And this is just knowing the formula again, the steps, loan to value, loan over value. Value is the purchase price. The loan amount is the amount that the person is borrowing. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. So first you have to subtract the 250 from the 600,000 right. to get the actual whatever your down payment is. Price. Whatever your down payment is, no matter what the amount, whether it's $1,000, 250,000, a million, or whatever it might be, you always the amount you're going to put down as the cash down payment will always get subtracted from the per, the the, uh, the purchase price of 650,000. And okay. that gives you the amount that you need to borrow. Um, let me. I'll give. I'll, I'll write it. Let's. We'll write out an example of. Let's see. Um. Say you're buying a house. You're gonna buy a house for five hundred sixty thousand dollars. And then we're gonna. We'll do this. I'm just gonna give you guys an example. Purchase price. A fifteen thousand dollar down payment right is what you want to put down on the house that's all you have to put down or whatever so if you do that you're going to take five hundred sixty thousand minus fifteen thousand and uh i know i could probably do this without a calculator but i will use a calculator that's why you guys are allowed to use the basic calculators five hundred sixty thousand minus fifteen thousand 545. All right. So that's the amount of the loan. Right. So we're going to, that's the amount, the loan amount. I'm going to put that here. Amount for the buyer to borrow. Spell. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take. Five hundred forty-five thousand divided by five hundred sixty thousand, which is the purchase price. So divided by five sixty five forty-five. Oh shoot, five hundred and forty-five thousand divided by five sixty thousand. That would be point or ninety-seven percent loan to value. See that? <laughs> so basically, they're putting down. You're putting down. You would be financing ninety-seven percent of the of the home of the value of the value. Three percent down. Five hundred forty-five thousand is three percent down. Right. Yeah. Well, you're only putting fifteen thousand down. You're only putting three percent of the purchase price down on the loan. Right. 97 that's not unheard of people do three percent loans yeah <clears throat> so loan divided by value what they're borrowing oh no loan to value which we no loan divided by value yes correct so the so loan the amount, amount would be whatever subtracting the down payment divided by the purchase price so i think that's where i'm getting hung up so they're not, it's it's that down payment. I got to remember to somehow right. I'll subtract that. I'm going to write this up for you guys too. Amount to borrow divided by purchase price equals LTV or loan to value. Does that make it easier? Um, yes, it makes it easier. Amount to borrow divided by purchase price equals loan to amount to borrow. Equals yes, loan loan to. Or I should take away or I'm gonna get rid of or. That's not. Let me get rid of that. I'm gonna put this in parentheses yeah. instead. And the amount you're actually borrowing divided by the purchase price. So that means they're only putting three percent down. They may have a question like this. They may say, if there's a ninety-seven percent loan to value, what percentage is the down payment? That would be three percent. You could do the math. You could do the substitution method. Do it backwards to get ninety-seven or get the three percent. But you are that one's easy because it's ninety-seven percent. It'll be three percent down. But they may have a different number here. They may say sixty percent loan to value, 
which would be yeah. 40 percent down i still don't know if i've got it written out the way that's going to make sense but i'm going to try it with just plugging some numbers in yeah, yeah. the the more you guys practice these practice tests i give you the ones that are going to be more likely on the test the the more comfortable you'll be getting what i say is i don't know and what i do with all my my learning of, for any courses i take don't ever cram the material and force it in your brain make them the, make the formulas and the information and the definitions part of your daily lives so when you go to take the test for the course and then you also sit at pearson view to take the state exam at that point it'll just roll right off your tongue when you're taking the test where you're not feeling like you have to cram in your head to try to find that information when you're sitting in front of the computer taking the 100 question exams both the course and the state right. That's what I did in that seven days. I made it part of my daily life. And I'm like, I'm not going to force myself and overwhelm myself with the, the information. I'm going to speak out loud to make it part of what I, my vocabulary or my math in my brain. And that's how you will feel comfortable when you sit for the exams both times. So you crammed this whole course into seven days? Uh, well, yeah, I wanted to get it done. So I did the seven days with my school that i went to back in 2018 congratulations that must have been difficult oh yeah well it was after my father passed away and i wanted a new career so i just i gotta get it over with that's what mm -hmm. i wanted to do and i was tired of working for corporate america so that's why i'm like I'm oh getting, honey i'm right there with you after that's why 20, i'm doing this <laughs> 25 years or 20 years of corporate america i was done so that's yeah. why um all right cool so we're gonna go ahead and which number was that? Oh. oh no, I say which number are we going to now? Oh, we're gonna go to 14 on, on this practice. These are on that printout of yours. Uh, these what I have here is not in order of what you have. I went and selected yeah. the ones that were probably the most likely you're gonna see on the state exam. That's what I did. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I can send you this one though. What I'll send you guys this in an email later. What I have here that we're going over tonight for everybody. Okay. I'll send you guys an email tonight in the order that I put them in. That way you can study these even more. Then oh, the that would be awesome. Thank you. No worries. Um, number 14, a man purchased a home for 287500 made a down payment of 25%, and secured a new conventional mortgage loan for the balance. The keyword here is new, right? Remember, there's the part, this is new conventional mortgage, right? Not they're not refinancing. There is a new one. Okay. Was that? It's, I, okay, I'm just following you. Oh no, you're good. You're good. I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, for you guys, calculate the intangible taxes due. In this problem, the bar, bar we're borrowing. The buyer is borrowing seventy five percent because they already told you it's a twenty five percent down payment. So that means what seventy five and twenty five is one hundred. Seventy five percent right. is what they're borrowing. Of the 287500 which then we will multiply by 75 cents or 0.75, 75%, sorry, equals 215625 which is the loan amount. Intangible tax constant is 0 0.002. There's your answer. 215625 times 0 0.002 is $431.25. It's just... Taking the time when you go to take the state exam, when you take my course exam in your lap, I would say you guys always need to take it on a desktop computer or a browser or like the one you have, Allison, will work. Your Microsoft Edge, you can take it okay. on that, on the browser. But at least just don't take it on, nobody take it on a phone or an iPad just because there could be connectivity issues in your it, Wi-Fi crashes. And if your Wi-Fi crashes during my course exam, you would have to take the exam again the second time and make sure you didn't that you passed it because then you would have to take the whole course again because it, it doesn't it, it does there's there's no way for the system to know that your system, your computer went down or your internet went down so that's why we say right. use a laptop or a desktop computer that has a more stable connection um but so that's all it is just looking at the numbers and reading the problem carefully remember what was it elementary school we were, when we were in or middle school maybe even high school too and well maybe some college but 
they always did these math word problems. I used to hate these. Yeah, words. I hated yeah. those. <laughs> right? So it's basically about how fast, you know, the train is going down the tracks mm -hmm. compared yeah. to the, the road, you know, how, what, when will the train arrive? All right. Based on the speed of the train, those kind of problems when you were in school. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. these are, it's word problems. They give you the numbers, they give you the percentage. Read it carefully. The key word in this is new conventional mortgage. Okay. It's a new conventional mortgage. So that that number we would plug in here, are we figuring, would it be that 0 0.002? Yep. Because in, oh, intangible, intangible tax will always be 0 0.002 is what it is. That's the rate of intangible taxes. So let me share this screen where the booklet is. And I'm going to share you there. All right. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to highlight this a different color to green. If it lets me. All right. See the keyword right here? New, New financing. So when you're doing a refi, it's different. Um, I wouldn't get don't confuse yourself on that. Don't confuse myself. Don't just know that it's no, no, yeah. And I'm just telling you that for your own safety. Because, because like I said, our book is not real world. I mean, right. these figures are real world, but what I'm trying to say is that for testing purposes, just know what they have in front of us. That intangible tax is always only charged on the mortgage loan and only applies to new financing only. Okay. The doc stamp on the D or the promissory note is the doc stamps on the note. That's new and assumed mortgage loans. Whereas intangible tax is only applied to new financing. So the fact that it says new finance. So if, if our word problem said new, had it showed the new loan, and also show the assumed loan, you would do the doc stamps on the note, 35 cents per 100. And then you would also have done the intangible tax, 0 0.002 for new financing and added the two together. But oh, you know, that's okay. not the problem. Yeah, we did that prior, but, didn't we? Yeah, okay. this is where, this is this one. But intangible tax, the keyword, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Um, hold on, let me go back to where I was. Okay. Come on, Zoom. Oh, that's not it. Sorry. All right, so we're going to go on. We're doing good on time. I'm just going to go to... Wait, where'd it go? Hold on. Really? Okay. Um, that's not what I want. I'm trying to get back to my... Oh, duh. Can you guys see my screen here? The, mat, the, the yes. Word document? Okay. All right. So now we're going to go into comparables, calculating comparables. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And I was explaining okay. this earlier. Number 20, an appraiser is appraising a three bedroom house with a fireplace. We're doing comparables is what we're doing. The comparable has four bedrooms and no fireplace. Okay. The three bedroom house. And I'm going to type this in here. This is what you will see. You will call this the subject property, the the property that you are your your buyer is interested in. Okay, this is the subject property right here. And I think okay. it's bolded, but I'm going to underline this. This is the subject property. <clears throat> comparable property is a property. Comparable means it's comparable. It's similar. But not exact. Not doesn't have to be completely exact, right? So this one has one more bedroom, but no fireplace, right? Whereas the subject property has three bedrooms with a fireplace. What is the adjusted sales price of the comparable if the sales price was eight hundred and fifty thousand, and a bedroom is valued at twenty thousand dollars, and the fireplace is valued at fifteen thousand? So. Just remember to not worry and stress out about this. They will always give you the value of an extra bedroom and the value of a fireplace or a value of a pool, whatever it might be. They're going to give you those numbers on the test. Okay. So we're talking, they want, the question is, what is the adjusted sales price? Not of, not of the subject property, but of the comparable property. If the sales price was 850,000 
and the bedroom is valued at 820. I'm sorry, 820,000. I'm sorry, 850,000. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The bedroom is valued at 20,000 and the fireplace is valued at 15. All right. This is another thing. I'll share this with you guys. Put this on your print it out if you can. I will send this in a text tonight as well. But I'm going to spell it. This is an acronym CBS. Comp or a comparable. I'm going to just make it like this better. Subtract. Okay. CIA. Comparable. Comparable. Inferior. Add. And I'm going to go ahead and share you guys this. I should have just done it like this the first time, but these are just something to commit to memory. Okay. Comp better subtract, comp inferior add. So we're going to take the sales price of $850,000. You're going to subtract $20,000 because a bedroom, remember, all right, it, the comp is better because that, remember the comparable has one extra bedroom. So we subtract $20,000 from the subject property. That gives you $830,000. $830,000. We're going to add $15,000 to the comparable because it has a, oh, no, the comparable is inferior. So you add $15,000 for the fireplace. That gives us $845,000 for our answer. So comparable better, always subtract. Comparable, inferior, add. Play very close attention to what they're asking you in the question when you read the problem. They're asking you, what is the adjusted sales price of the comparable, if the sales price was 850,000 and the value bedroom is valued. So the comparable was 850,000, but it went from 850,000 to 845,000 because it didn't have a fireplace. See what I'm saying? The 15,000 is coming from the fire. See, that's where the fireplace was. So that's, that's how they got that number. It's just, this is memorization right here. This section right here. That's how I remembered it. And they give you, they will always give you the values right here. This will always be provided to you. You will know the purchase price or the sales price and the value of the comparable uh, items like the additional bedroom, a pool, or in this case, additional bedroom and a, a fireplace. So how do you know which thing is better and which thing is inferior? Okay, so- That's what I'm not understanding. No, right no, now. you're good, it's fine. That's what I'm here for. So, <clears throat> ooh, all right, so to get, explain this to you guys, the best way I can explain it is, we'll look at the problem. So we're looking, the appraiser is appraising a I'm going to take this out because this might be confusing. It's confusing me right now. Comparing a three-bedroom house with a fireplace. The comparable has four bedrooms and no fireplace. All right. The fact that this has one more bedroom in the one more bedroom in the comparable mm -hmm. makes the comparable better to the subject property. So, so it makes it better than that one, but then the right fireplace makes it inferior right okay so yep. you you're adding you're subtracting and then adding to get this eight hundred forty five thousand. you're subtracting because from the the subject property of eight hundred fifty thousand. Oh, because right? it has one more bedroom oh, so you you're take taking away the right and the 850 you're taking it from the the sales price of the comparable not the subject property in this question now, yeah, that's why you guys have to make sure when you guys take the test, like I was saying, to read the question very, 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 can't stress it more, carefully. Yeah, I can see why they give you so much time to do this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You just got to pay attention to the words. If you pay attention, you read the problem and you understand what it's asking, then you definitely will get the answer right. But so, so, we're, so we're taking 850000 okay? That's the per sales price of the better property. So you take 850,000 and we subtract 20,000 because 
It is the better than bedroom. the subject property, which only has three bedrooms, whereas the comparable has four, right? Comp, mm -hmm. better, subtract. And then our subject property has a fireplace, but the comparable property does not. So that's why you add whenever the comparable is inferior. It's inferior because the comparable does not have a fireplace, but the subject property okay. does. So then you now add I see, I think now with the numbers at the bottom, that makes sense. I think, uh, yeah. Okay, I got it. Now. Oh, Thank good. you. Sorry, it's it takes time well. always to explain things to me. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. All right, we're going to go with this one. We might just, you guys might just start the 50 most questions on your guys own tomorrow night you guys can get together and and chat on facetime or something or on video chat or something where i can yeah. even set lee up with it tomorrow night where he can jump on my desktop computer or no on my laptop tomorrow night you guys can do this together if you want um but i think we're just going to stick with the math tonight because this i know it's gonna i want you guys to be able to, to get a nice rest of sleep tonight and let your minds process the math. Because if we jump in through the next packet, you guys, I don't want to overwhelm your brain tonight. Because the math is pretty, you know, not intense, but you know what I mean. It's a lot. It's pretty intense. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> intense. So it's just we're just going to focus on the math. When we're done with this, we'll be done tonight. Tomorrow, you guys start 1 through 50 together. Tuesday night, we're going to take turns reading the 50 questions. One, you know, you, 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 or whatever, you know what I mean, an order or yeah. rotate or whatever, the 50 questions. And that way you guys, I want to, because I want to start teaching you guys on a more interactive level, because that's how I know you guys will grasp the material even more by on an interactive level. And I'm here to help you guys understand the questions um, and go over the questions with you guys. We're going to, so Tuesday night will be a review of what you guys do together Monday night is what we're going to do. And I'm okay. going to go over the questions. And then when you guys are, you, or you're scheduled to take your, if you, when you're ready to take your course exam, we'll do a review of all the 50 questions in the math. And when you're ready to take the state exam, we'll do a review in advance again on that. Uh, okay. And I recommend is that as soon as you're done with the course and you're done with the state exam, or I'm sorry, done with the course exam, that you schedule your, your state exam quickly. And you did it, Allison, did you do the application yet for the state? Um, I knew no. You okay, I'll send you that in an email too on how to do it. It's just the DBPR like you did for nursing, I'm sure. Uh -huh. And then you just have to go fill out the application. And you can- Now, when do you out. have to take the test though, after you fill it out? Well, you have to get an approval from the state on the application first. That's what you have to oh, do. Oh, okay. But I want you to make sure you do it sooner than later. So that when you're done with my course and you pass it, which you, you will, that way you can schedule with Pearson View as soon as the state gives you an authorization number because you don't want to have a huge gap between finishing the course and taking the state exam. Because right, you, want right. the you want that information in your head to go take the state exam is what I'm saying. Send it to me too, please. What's that? So yeah, I will. Yes. And you did you already do your fingerprints? Um, nope, I haven't done anything yet. Okay, you got to make sure you do that. You got to take your... No, Allison, you said you did yours in the last five years. I've got right? fingerprints on file still that fine, are good. Yeah. But for you, um, uh, Amanda, make sure you do that ASAP because you can't, I wouldn't do the application for the state until five days after you got your fingerprints taken electronically because okay. they have to be in the database in order for the state to give you the okay on the application. Got so, it. So I'll send you, let's do this. I'll send you a, um, a uh, a rec or a, a rec or a um a, a place that you are are able to do your real estate fingerprints in Davie, Florida, for you where to go down awesome. there. And they also have mobile ones that can come to your house as well to do it. So I think they do them at like PacMail and yeah uh, UPS and places like that. Like as that well. yeah. but, but nowadays, like Tina did hers mobile. They came to her at her house. That's so, awesome. With the COVID thing, that's why they do it mobile, more mobile now. But it's cool. It was it didn't cost any extra to do it mobile. They came to her and on her time. Yeah, I think it is it still it used to be like 80 bucks. Is that still about yeah, it's like it 83, 80 something bucks? Yeah. Yeah. Bucks. Something like yeah. That. Um, 
All right, so let's go over this. I think we're we got a couple more, but we're not going to go. We're, we may stop at a certain point because I don't want to it's overwhelm anybody's mind. A man can borrow. <laughs> actually, let's skip that one. This one. We're going to do this one because this one's more important than the one ahead of it that we that I skipped. So, how many acres of number ten? How many acres and square feet are there in the legal description of North one half of the Southeast one fourth? Of the northwest one fourth and the north one half of the south one half of the southeast one fourth of the end one fourth of section 11. All right, so please don't get yourself overwhelmed. There's a lot of fraction or numbers. This is about, these are legal descriptions of a parcel. Parcel is a piece of land. That way, this tells the, the county and the state about where the boundaries of the parcel are on the ground, on the earth, is what this is. What's that? I was, that's not number 10 on my the one I printed out. So maybe, or is this on the 50 questions? This is on the map. This might be, may it come from the 50 questions. I think it. so, because I've seen yeah. that. I think yeah. that's where I stopped on the 50 questions. 50, like, I don't yeah. have an idea. Oh, yeah, it is. It's on the 50 questions section is where I pulled yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because this, this is important because you're going to see this question on the state exam. And then see how it says this is an extremely popular math question from the chapter 10. This is a math question. Yep. From chapter you're 10. I'm gonna die when I get to math. No, no, this you're good. Be... So we're gonna probably after this question, we're gonna stop for the night because this one's a really intense question. Because, like you said, this right. is popular. Now, I, I want you to explain how to figure this out. This go yeah, no, we're, gonna, <laughs> gonna be guys, we're gonna go through it right now. So okay, this is what you gotta put down and your memory, okay? I'm going to even screenshot this and send you guys this in an email tonight or whenever. Yeah, tonight at some point. All right. Just like the 43,560, right? Just yeah. remember, there are 640 acres. In, okay, every section, every 640 acres in every section. So every time you see a question that asks you to determine how many acres or how many square feet are in one section, you're always going to start with 640. That is a constant, right? 640 is a magic number. Okay. People divide 640 by the denominators. Okay. The denominators, you're going to divide by, don't worry about the top number, the numerator, right? right. You're going to divide by this number, this number, this number, this number. So by two, four, four, two, two, right. four, four. Stop at the Hold on, Lee. I'm going to get to that. Hold on. Yes. To arrive at the number of acres. All right. But here's the trick to it. With these problems, you are looking for the word and. Because if you see the word and, right, you will mm -hmm. need to start at 640 again because they were asking you about two separate pieces of property. Then you will add the two pieces of property together. So, here we go. You have north one half, southeast one fourth of the north one fourth. This is one property by itself, right here. Okay, this is how I can explain it to you guys. What's that? Oh, no, no. I was just trying to form in my head. So you got to divide that six forty, divide it by two, two, four, and four. But then you stop on this for this part where it's highlighted. Right, but do you divide by two, get an answer, divide that answer right. by four, or right. do you divide 640 by four? No, no, 640 divided by two, 640 divided by four, and 640 divided by four, all three of the denominators in that one section right here. The key word, like they say, is and. and okay, means so that, then we're going to do it again. Right, and the word and means that the next description is a separate parcel of land. Okay. Yep. So it'd be you 640 divided by two. Land or parcels. Yep. 640, 640 divided, divided by, each by denominator. Two. 640 divided by four. It's right there. See, right on this part for the first one. If that helps you guys. 640 divided by two divided by four divided by four. And you treat that as one piece of land by itself. Let's see. And two, two, four, four. And then 
going back to the top here to show you guys this. So after the word and, right, this is a separate parcel right here, these denominators. Mm -hmm. So you treat it as a separate problem. You're going to divide 640 over 2, divide it over 2, divide it over 4, divide it over 4. So that's where we get this part right here. You see how the questions, how this one's 20 acres for the first parcel and 10 acres for the second parcel of land. And then that's when you take 10 plus 10, 20 plus 10, you add those together, you get 30 acres. All right. The next step okay, of the right. problem is, or whenever you're ready, let me know. Or if you how, did you... Huh? <laughs> how did you get what? How did we get what? I'm not sure how you got to... I'm sorry, 640 divided by two. And you said you don't divide the next. How do you get to the 10 acres? No, no, no. Oh, no. so it's 640 divided by two. And then that's 320. That 320 divided by four is 160. The 160 divided by four is, will give you your 20. And then the next problem is an additional two. So your 20 divided by two equals 10. Is that, did you follow that? <laughs> uh not really but so i don't know i got i know that so it, it it's the way i originally thought it you do the 640 by two and you get the 320 then you divide that by four to get yeah. the 160 down to the 20 yeah and then and then you what, take that 160 and divide it by four again right right, right. and then for your second problem there's an additional two in there so that will give you your 10 technically you don't have to do all that math over again just about, yep 160. Then, okay, yeah, I just had to had it written down wrong. So yeah, I think I can get it now. No, that makes that makes perfect sense. It's just now I gotta that's a lot of so that's a lot. It's a very intense question. All right, well yeah, it is. We have one more step to go through and then we'll we're oh. gonna finish up for the night. I know, right? It's all good. The fun <laughs> part. <laughs> all right, please proceed. This is why it's the most popular question on the course in state exam. All right, so once you know this piece of property has 30 acres, because we added the two parcels of land together, you can multiply that number by 43,560, which is 43,560 square feet equals one acre, which is the number of square feet in one acre. You times that by 30, 1,306,800 1, 306, square feet. And your answer is two parts. The answer is 30 acres and 1,306,800 square feet. Just like it shows uh, right here, B. You see how they give you one that says 20, one that says two that says 30 acres, and one that says 80, right? So yeah. probably when you're on the test, it's so when you got to the point of 20, then you know that's A you is the answer. You know that it's one of these. But it's definitely B is the answer. But oh, one of okay. these is going to be one of two because they, they're they showing you like these. Remember I say in multiple choice in this test, there's always going to be two question answers that are way wrong and one that's sort of right and one that's completely right on the test, on the answer. Mm -hmm. And B is the most right because of the the math that we did down here, which is the 42,560 times 30, 1,306,800 square feet. Don't get overwhelmed by the I'm denominator. I, I am because I'm still, I'm still messed up on how you got the, where the 10 came from. <laughs> okay. I, I can actually, let's do this. I'll go ahead and we can I borrow your calculator. Because I got to 20 by doing what she said, the 320 by 2, 160, 160, 40, 40 by 2, right. that's 10 or 20. The word and separates it. So you have to take, so the first part of the question is you're going to take that 2, that 4, that 4, and then you're going to divide that all into the 640. This The and is, is what separates it. It makes it the second question, which gives you the 10. So there's an additional 2 there. So there's 2, 2, 4, and 4. And then you're just going to, I mean, technically you've already done most of the math at that point. You take your result from your first question, divide that by two, or you could just do it all over. I mean, I don't want to confuse you, but that's yeah. how I, that's how I saw it. And that's how I figured the 10 very quickly. Does that make sense? Well, I'm going to bring, I'm going to type it out like this for you guys right here. So we're going to, I'm just going to make, I know that. 
I, I think I got it now because you'd have to take another. I right. don't know. Well, I'm gonna the one ends up with forty plus. Tw I'm gonna break it down like you're on the taking the test. Like when you guys are taking the test, let me go. Um, hold on one second. Let me just copy this, and I'm just gonna do this because this is how you're gonna do it on the calculator. Anyhow, when you're gonna see it in front of you, right? So this is the second part, right? So I'm just gonna break it down. So six forty divided by two again, which is three twenty, right? Wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. Right? You do the three twenty divided by two. Right? Oh my god! Yes, yes, yes. You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, leave really. That's where I got my confused. brain is. Sorry, my brain is. Hold on. Yes, that's right. Three. You're going down the line then. That's one sixty. Right. One sixty, right? And then you're dividing it by two again. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You're dividing by four. So you're just going down the line with the numbers. The numbers should be going down as you do it, like this with this problem. So that's forty. And you divide that by four. Four. And that gives give you 10. ten. And there's your answer, Allison. Divide it by four. Okay, so that's this. Okay. I meant to think that write it out like that in my head, and then I went to start typing it, and I'm like, oh my god, that's not right, Nick. What are you doing? <laughs> it's all good. But what I'm trying to why well, wanted to just put it out like that for you guys. Cause when you guys, this is the way you're gonna see it in your calculator on in front of you at the test, right? Yeah. So just to make it easier, I put it like this. I just spelled it out like the calculator calculates it for you on a basic calculator is what I did. Um, that was probably like the scariest chapter with the with all these halves in the north. And oh, the yeah. South. No, but don't get overwhelmed by it because ignore the numerator, the ones on the top. You don't need to worry about north, south, southwest. What you really need to worry, no, is like you said, Amanda, was the word and, right? Stop. That's where you stop. And means stop, like starting a new stop at and, right? Right. It's like, remember when you used to do the math formulas, maybe middle school, high school, where you did the parentheses and you would do parentheses, you would calculate whatever was in one parenthesis and there would be a division in the middle after you know, the parenthesis. If, if this question was laid out like that, I mean, I'm sure it'd be a lot easier, but because it's all in words, it makes it 10 times harder. Yeah, well, no, it's like this, if for a visual sake. Yeah. It would be like this, right? Exactly, yes, exactly. They're not gonna do that to you on, they were not gonna put that on the test though. You just have of to course go on not. the test. That's but the it was like that, you you would calculate what's in one parenthesis, calculate the other parenthesis, and then you would divide or whatever the question was, or multiply or add, right? Yes. This one I can't see. Oh, to section grasp. eleven. <laughs> this, this is just there. This has nothing to do with it. Section eleven has nothing to do with it. They just want you to. They want you to divide by the, the dom, denominator in each problem, um, for each parcel. Who cares about this? No, that on a legal so you document said B is the answer, right? Right. This matters on and the tax records, right? Section However, 11? I'm doing it. I'm getting A for the answer. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, you I, have I to go know. step by step like this: six forty divided by two, divide then three twenty divided by two. You might be if you're if you didn't do the separate if you didn't stop at and that's probably mm -hmm. where you're getting the numbers mixed up. So oh, you know, I think that's what I did: two, four, and four. No, I did three things, right? The no, first one, the first part would be. No, you got to add them uh, together. You have to add the twenty to the ten. That's yeah, what. but I didn't get 20 on, I got 10 on both of them. Like That's this. why I'm not understanding. Yeah. Maybe I didn't add something extra. One, two, two, four, and four. So that would be division. First, that would be no, dividing to get to the half, 10 and 20. The first half of the question only has three denominators. Right, and the four. other one has four, right? Four, right, exactly. That's why the numbers are different, 30 and 20 and 10. Because there's okay. one less denominator on the first one. First section. Right. Okay. Six. So go on ahead. Don't don't worry about me. I'll, oh, no, I'll no. I think for tonight, that's we're gonna stop there. Actually, that's the end. We did everything tonight on the math. I saved the best for last, is what I did for you guys. Oh, so gonna, I will share this with you guys. Go over it. Allison, of course. Call me, text me. Nick, can you explain this to me? Whatever it is, same you, Amanda, Tina, Nicole. 
Sorry you guys couldn't be with us tonight. I think I've recorded this and you guys are going to get a recording of this tonight. But you guys all, at any time, text me, call me, and we can sit down together and I can go on one-on-one -on -one Zoom with any of you guys or, or, or Tina or Nicole, since you guys are local, you guys can come over to the house and I'll sit down with you and show you how to do it as well, in person as well. All right? That hurt my brain and I'm, you know, I'm the teacher. So it's all good, right? Do you guys, how do you feel, Lee? Yeah, I figured it out now. I put an extra step in because I like to work harder than I have to. Oh, no, yeah. See, that's, how you, that's how you get the answer wrong. Don't overdo it, overthink it. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you can make a mistake. What, Lee? Oh, you don't have any questions? All right. All right, all good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to end the Zoom and that the recording is going to end as well. You ladies have a good night. And uh, Tina and Nicole, like I said, for listening to the recording, make sure I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.